You're listening to Polymatic.media, episode 116 for August 2024. Welcome to the Polymatic cast. Hey, John, how's it going? Jeez, you came in loud. Did I? Well, <laughs> yeah, well that's, that's what it gets when, uh, when you, you were one sick and you're, you're recovering. Yeah, yeah. Potato mode was engaged. Yeah. Um, so I went to Otakon 2024. And all you um, got was Rona. And it took 40, that's been my joke, is it took 46,000 people to finally take me down. Um, I've not had, you know, Corona this whole time. Corona, COVID, um, the coronavirus, Rona. Um, this whole time, um, I've been good to avoid it. And, um, you know, I just had to be around a massive amount of people um, before I finally caught it. Now, that being said, um, at that time, I was walking around a lot, doing a lot of stuff. So I think by the time I got back, um, I calculated steps. It's about 42 miles in some change. So, um, you know, my body was, you know, I, I was, I don't know if I was tired but definitely I was, you know, physically um, not in the normal circumstances. I would be just sitting my butt here in the office in the house, you know, mm. where I don't move a lot. Like at most I might move a mile a day uh, comparatively. So, um, but yeah, so I got, got that, that was my major update. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, just for the last, you know, almost two weeks I've been sort of healing. And yeah. uh, my voice hasn't fully recovered, and I cough a little bit, but um, but yeah, for the I most to, part, I'm doing good. I had to endure the uh, what sounded like Alan dying on the other end for for a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's because I got up and I needed to like have some water and clear my throat, and um, and yeah, it takes a moment to process. Um, I had a thought that I was like, oh, I'll go back to the office. I've been missing for weeks, and then. Uh, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait until I'm a little more not coughing in person, um, mm. healthy, you know, uh, before I go into the office. Cause then people are like, he still has the plague. So, well, you can work from home, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to go in a couple of days a week, but there's really no one, um, complaining. Um, you know, oh, I had good. my vacation and then, uh. And then I've been missing because, you know, I hadn't really talked to anyone in the office. There's sort of one person that I, um, we go walk at, you know, on lunch. Um, we physically get some movement, right? And that's how I get some like 10 miles, um, you know, of, of walking around in my week um, through that process. But, 10 uh, miles a week, that's not a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, it is compared to the maybe one mile I might do at most in the extreme case of being in the house and going out to the market and coming back. So comparatively, that's an improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, I know in your universe, you can walk everywhere where this is just not the case. Um, so, so, uh, Rona was uh, annoying, but how was Otacon? Uh, Otacon was good. Um, it was, did you see anything of the con itself or did you, were you just videotaping the whole time? Well, I was filming. So what I've transitioned, what I when I started, basically the the core thing was get people in chairs with lights and a camera, talk to them about things, and record that experience. Um, and and the, those are interviews. And that was the starting point of figuring out maybe what the core content was going to be for anything that I we were going to cut. Um, and and that that was good. And it, it helped me produce some edits that were self-contained because I got multiple people talking about similar topics or similar perspectives from the same kind of thread line. And as a result of that, I was able to make some cuts from that. Um, but for the most part, I learned that I got to a level of difficulty of getting people to note to be able to stop not freak out while they're at the con because, you know, everything is on fire and, you know, they're always alert and getting them to stop and isolate and just chill with me for an hour to talk to me became difficult. So I found myself roaming around looking to to capture B-roll. So I did that for a few years and then I caught some stuff where I was following people and based on that, 
Um, I was able to capture some other material that was really useful, which was kind of part of what I wanted this thing to evolve to. And so I started doing a lot of that. And then I realized the compliment of putting them in the chair to talk about the thing that I caught while I was following them, that urgent, um, you know, issue um, and, and, you know, sort of follow them like it's reality TV kind of thing where I'm behind them and you can see what's going on. Um, seemed to be a combination of both those pieces together. So I found myself in the last few years that I roam around a lot. That was the point of going through this whole diatribe of explaining that to inform that. Um, so that I did a lot of that. And so this year, um, I got a chance to go into something that Odakon has, Odakon has that's called the Maid Cafe. Um, there is no photography, no filming that's allowed. Um, but I'm a staff and I talked to the two people in charge of the event and um, they allowed me to come in and take pictures of stuff, um, take pictures, take video. And then I got uh, one of the two uh, you know, co-department heads to sit down with me for an hour and talk to me about the Maid Cafe. Um, and so that's the example where I'm going to take that B-roll and I'm going to take her sitting down and talking to me about things and I'm going to have things to show while she's talking not just you looking at her in a chair talking to me with a white background so it's things like that that I was as one individual been able to capture more of effectively um, and so for me this whole sort of walking around I'm walking around but I'm being much more targeted about my time um, you know to do that and um, we have another department called Cosplay Rescue. Repairing and, cosplay stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that was, I don't know if that was, uh, you know, it came from other cons. Um, I definitely know it came from um, somebody who, you, look, if you, if you do cosplay of any degree, especially if you have like large wings or something like that, you know, you're going you're gonna to be walking around, things are going to break. And you can only carry so much stuff with you or you have a friend who literally is chaperoning you everywhere, you know, and you only have so much repair kit. Um, and they literally created a whole department to help people. So you come to Cosplay Rescue and they'll help you fix your outfit, um, your cosplay. And um, pretty, pretty interesting group. So anyway, I went in to talk to them. And um, so that's that's somebody I'm going to feature next year. Um so it, these are little kinds of things I'm doing as one individual. Um, I get people in chairs, I talk to them, and then I go follow them around for, you know, a bulk of a day. Wouldn't um, it be, like, be interesting if you had, like, a second, like, if you had, uh, like, a end of, end of Otakon video, which you, you guys could post, at, like, at the end of the... So they... Um, to do recap. these... To, well, they do, and they um, they have something called closing ceremonies. So, closing ceremonies um, is really just to, to give the membership um, details and and to uh, talk about all the highlights and show the winning AMVs and um, you know show a bunch of video and media productions, and then that also includes a closing reel from the con coverage group, the media productions group. Um, they roam around looking for all the awesome cosplay and awesome things that were going on and they capture a lot of material and they stress up until, you know, that 2.30 um, to, to cut, you know, a, a, basically a music video. Um, and they do a pretty phenomenal job at that. Um, but, you know, that, that group used to be, its design was to cover more was to document more and then it eventually devolved into let's just show the fun stuff that happened at con by the end of con um and that's like a little recap video um i so i was talking about may cafe and i went in and i was talking to one of the, the heads and i said okay this is what I want to do. This is what I capture. I know that when people walk in, um, you do the greeting. I want to capture it multiple times. So every time there's a new greeting, I'm going to capture it from over here and over there and over there and this angle. And she looks at me and she goes, I got an idea. 
you're going to be our first greeting. So what we do is I walk in and with the camera and the gimbal and they went and they did the whole thing for me and I flew right through them and it was amazing. And I gave that over to the media productions and it shows up in the closing reel. Nice. So, so there's, you know, little things like that. So, so, um, the, so the plus points were you got a lot of footage and the, the, the negative points, points you also got away got with Corona. <laughs> yeah. Um, I made sure this year though, I wasn't, I wasn't running around ragged. I made myself stop and sit down. Now I was also part of a group that put a, um, a 30th year museum together. So, you know, when I wasn't filming, I was helping build the cabinets and put that museum together. Um, and so I was in there a lot. So I had a place to kind of hang out aside from my own secure room where I have all my gear. Um, but, uh, you know, I sat down with people and, you know, I made myself pace a little bit, right? So I didn't kill myself. So the one thing of note that I wanted to talk about briefly is in the 30th Museum, the room was big enough that basically the 1994 convention fit entirely in that room. So one of the Easter eggs that we did is we laid down tape where they did the layout of the 1994 convention in tape all on the floor. And as people were walking through the different, um, you know, sort of little uh, um, exhibits of the years and looking at the cabinets and stuff, there was a little thing where it says, oh, this is where registration was. This is where a dealer's room was. This is where, you know, um, I heard from one of the founders what he had said is uh, almost as a joke, um, he had thought about coming into the museum and pulling up a chair into where ConOps was, Convention Operations, and just sitting there <laughs> during the length of the museum. So it was pretty interesting. And once people realized that they were walking through the different areas of the 1994 convention in this one open space, you know, gives you an amazing amount of context. So pretty good. Um, it went off really well. And uh, my stuff was exhibiting a little bit, um, you know, in that room as well. And, um, yeah, so pretty good. So, you know, sorry to jump right into that, but that was really all my stuff aside from, you know, surviving, uh, you know, the Rona. Yep. Rona Chan got you. Yeah. Finally. <sighs> well, yeah. So last time uh, we had a, we had a plan to record some stuff happened and I was really tired because I didn't sleep that night. Mm -hmm. And uh because i was doom scrolling on the internet because somebody uh, did something bad um that was a, that was the uh, the night of the um what's it called the the when trump got uh, shot at yeah. so that kind of sucked so then i was doom scrolling all night because i am uh not capable of turning that off so so yeah <laughs> so yeah. i was tired last time <laughs> i i'm very aware when i do it and I know that I'm tired. Yeah. Um, in, in this case, though, I will say, um, coming away from Otakon, right? So that's really a week of experience that rips me completely from my normal routine. Um, so that, that's a, that's a, turns out to be a positive thing. It's kind of what I need. I just need that more often than I, I get throughout the year. Um, and then, um, then having the Rona was not fun but it forced me to be out of pattern um my problem is i would cough then i doom scroll and i'm tired but if when i go back to being trying to go back to sleep i end up coughing sorry yeah but the the the, the heat has also been uh super super hard in the last few weeks and uh yeah that's you guys been... don't you guys don't do ac right nope well no. Some people do, but like, I didn't. I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. We're getting fiber. Oh, that's good. Yeah, eight gigs. Okay. At least that's what po what's possible in my uh, apartment. So, but they're gonna have to drill through the the floors mm. to get to the apartments. So. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know. They offer higher amount, not eight gigs for me, but I'm at one gig and that's been fine. Yep. So my, my plan is to go for two gig and then, uh, if I want to, I might be able to upgrade later. But then again, like in a couple of years, they'll say, oh, we got 10 gigs now. Because, well, you know, it's, it's just fiber. The advantage for me has been I'm the only one here. Um, one gig has been plenty for me. And the price on it hasn't really, it's gone down a little bit. The price on it has been stabilized. And one gig is plenty. Um, yeah. I think I can get up to two gig at the moment so yeah so um and and then the heat was a little bit too much for me and i was like yeah okay we'll skip yeah and then we wanted to record after you got back from otakon and then you turned out to have rona so yeah so we shifted another two weeks i think yeah we're about yeah. halfway through the month yeah 18th right now yeah. so yeah i got a drone Bought yeah a drone. i saw again again yes so you so when do you think you'll sell this one? I don't know. I've been playing around with it, playing with it, but now you have to have like a um not a certificate but like a ownership ID on it. So there's some new rules. So that they kind of make it less fun, but you know. It's, well, it's still a nice tool to have. That's probably a good idea for people that, you know, something gets lost or gets caught in a tree. Hmm. We also got like a big new projects at work, and this week was insane. We had um, so Monday evening there was a routing problem. They were they were messing with some network stuff, and where we host our some of our stuff on Wednesday morning, I get beeped out of bed at two a.m. in the morning. Yeah, and then I had to spend the rest of the morning, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. Like, and I pretty pretty soon found out, hey. The Amsterdam Internet Exchange is uh, behave, misbehaving. So, yep. Then I had to go chase people, and then they didn't respond until 9 a.m. in the morning, which really sucked. You should be monitoring this. This is something you should be monitoring. But, yeah. We poked them, and we uh, said, hey, we don't want this to happen again, please. We already put in uh, some, some warnings. Like This is not cool. You should have seen this. Initially, I wanted to do like uh, the worst stuff we've ever bought or purchased, but uh, I think I think that Alan is uh, not going to survive much longer. He keeps coughing like this. Oh, I'm good now. I, uh -huh. I just have my little fit where I have to kind of clear it out and uh -huh. I'm good for a while. Um, you know, because of that political problem, it's turned to a good positive favor here in the U.S. So um, there's some hope again. So. Younger yeah. people, yeah, who could have thought that was a good idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's it's the political burnout that I think the country has been feeling and that we just kind of needed that shift, except that the, the first offering for it was um, um, not a positive one. So, um, and we've been feeling the repercussions of that for a long while and, you know, now we're in a place where maybe it will turn for the positive. So we'll find out. You'll yep. find out. I know, um, look, I would have never thought the rest of the world would be as invested in what's going on in the U.S. Um, if it wasn't for y you sharing your perspective. Um, I get that the U.S. does impact other parts of the world, um, you know, financially with exports and, and whatnot. And, um, where I don't think we're that special child with the blue ribbon all the time for participation, but unfortunately U S does have, um, uh, it does have impact to other people, um, outside the U S and people do take interest. So aside from the dramatics and the, the comedy that comes out of it for you guys, um, yeah, but it is been... our hell and, um, you know, so I mean, apparently it has a world stage that's interested occasionally. So. It's been uh, very interesting to watch all that stuff happen again and again and again. Yeah. Um, and also, again, from your perspective, realizing that Europe is, is, is not much better a lot of the time. So. What, do you, what do you mean? Um, they have their own 
political drama and you know and what was in in uh, toronto mayors that love uh love uh you know cocaine and and have all their drama and but toronto is in canada i know but what i'm just saying is there's other parts outside the u.s uh-huh but you uh, said europe <laughs> I did say Europe, but uh, what was this whole, there's a whole bunch of drama in France. There seems to be a lot of drama in France a lot of time, a lot of drama in Spain. Um, there, there's, seems there's, to be... there's always drama everywhere, but the the, 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 differ the difference is, is that eventually people make a consensus and they figure it out, but it, it doesn't seem to be fixed ever No, across the pond. It's like a, an eternal fight. No, I, it's it's been an evolving problem for probably decades. So no, definitely decades. Um, mm. Been around to watch it, so it's not been a positive thing for a long while. It's not getting much better. And then mm. uh, there's lots of tech stuff that happened in the meanwhile. I think we had CrowdStrike. Oh uh, yeah, uh, what that else? happened. Um, a bunch of uh, weird Twitter stuff. That I don't want to go into. Twitter well. stuff, um, Google, uh, Apple, Apple rearing its ugly head again. Uh, Malicious up. compliance is, is what I heard some people call it. And then that makes yeah. perfect sense. And um, I, you know, again, as being a, a Patreon creator, I, I got, you know, sort of the message from uh, from Jack, like we all did, about, um, you know, about how Apple is like, uh, you know, if you buy... If so, here's the thing: if you have um someone that is on Patreon uh, that you want to support, just go to the website, go to their website, you know, Patreon page, and go ahead and just do your your um, your pledging, your subscription stuff there. Don't do it through the Apple iOS app because Apple will take thirty percent cut of Patreon's like. Patreon only takes eight percent, but yeah, but they um, take thirty percent of the entire thing. Yeah, and that and so Patreon has offered us all an option. And I just said, okay, well, let it let it lean on the person that's using the iOS app because my message will be just what I told you, which is go to the website and do your billing there. Don't do it yeah, through the until, iOS app uh, until uh, Tim Apple decides that. Um... Well, they can't they're, because they're, they're going to do the browser. Um, well, you just don't do the browser on your phone. Do it on a desktop. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to use Safari. Go ahead and use, um, you know, go use Chrome or something and don't use the Apple wallet. Then they use then they use the Safari on their MacBook. Don't I, use Safari and don't use the Apple wallet on I'm your just, on your phone and or your desktop and you will not be going through any apple billing that's it yeah that's, that's otherwise you're I, cutting into the i love their hardware and their software is pretty okay the problem is the uh the the whole you yeah. want to be in control and um of and this is where europe comes in as a positive i'm, I'm just waiting for them to come after them for that too and then now we'll shut it all down. It's not like, you know, Apple doesn't have trillions just sitting around in the bank. And, and I'm sorry, their bank in Ireland. So, yeah. so the thing is with the, with their whole USB-C thing, I had a, I bought a drone, right? Yeah. My iPhone 15 has a USB-C. Yeah. So you, you'd think that the cable would work, right? The USB-C to USB-C? <laughs> no, no, it does not. So when you when you plug it into your uh, um, when you plug it into the controller, you have to use a, a little uh, lightning to USB C converter. So a female lightning to male USB C oh, to be so able you, to plug in your phone so because they're not allowing it data over it. That's another stupid. another side little thing. Yeah. The DJI app does not exist on the app store anymore and on the play store anymore interesting why <laughs> you have to sideload it onto your android phone if you have an android phone which is i'm, I'm not going to do that so yeah so you mean i you mean an apple because you said android yeah but on android yeah 
you have to uh, sideload it. Why do you have to sideload it? You should be able to get it out of the store. But it is not on the Play Store. Why? I don't know. That's odd. Yeah, that's I, super when odd. you said about iOS or something. Yeah, but like I Apple. have I have two phones. Okay, got it. So I, at first, I was like, oh, I'll just put it on my Android phone. It's a nice big screen, nice nice big nice big controller uh, surface. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll look it up. And I looked at the Play Store, and there's like third party apps that are okay. But there's always third party apps because they want to confuse you and want you not to use. No, but DJI. these are like actual, like these are paid apps. So the, you buy this to control your drone. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to go through the uh, DJI app. Interesting. Uh, but they don't work for this one, for the uh, 2 SE. Oh, okay. So this is this a smaller model? Uh, no, this is just a normal, uh, the, the same same form factor as the 2. You're having me look up DJI to see. DJI Mini 2 SE. Yeah, there's the store. That's it. That's DJI. not what you want. Virtual flight. Nope. Interesting. Well, um, it has to do with the permissions that it requires. And if you install it through the through the uh, side loading, mm-hmm. you get a... Uh, it just really wants to load basically any permission it can. Right, and okay. That, and Apple is like, you can be on the, on the, uh, on the app, but you're going to give permission for every single thing. Hmm. And you can just deny certain things, so that's what right. I do. Right, and Android, you can definitely the latest, you can definitely override. Yes, but it would still, if you do go through the APK install, you skip all that because it doesn't go through the Play Store. So the, all the permissions and stuff, they just get assigned. Hmm. Yeah, I was not really happy about to hear about that. So, well, um, for the most part, most of the DJI stuff does come with a controller, does it not? Yes, but you need to use the app to link to the controller to be able to lift off. Oh, interesting. That's pretty crappy. Yep, because hmm. it 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 checks the GPS. And it checks, it uses the internet to, to see if you can fly in that area. Hmm. Okay. It's like for, for airport safe zones and stuff like that. Right, right. I understand. Yep. So I've been playing with that. Hmm. What else? Yeah. I, Plenty um, of crafting. One of the, uh, the things that I, I did as my technology upgrade for this year for Oticon and the doc stuff. Um, I had, over the course of time, I bought the Rode Wireless Go's, the original ones, and they're pretty good. Um, they work wirelessly. They don't, uh, they don't record locally. And then they came out with the twos and I bought those. Um, and they made a couple of revi- hardware revision up- updates, but I found in, you know, prior years, they're really kind of unreliable. I had set them in a mode to always record. Um, and getting those files back off or being able to export them, you had to use their app and it was just, it just takes time and it was just complicated. And then their competitors came out with newer hardware where things recorded more reliably locally. It didn't require you to have all the silliness of like, um, having to use their app to convert it to wave or mp3 or whatever the format you wanted and you didn't have to go through all that stuff um and you would need a, an app on your phone to configure it or an app on your desktop to configure it it's always a pain um and one of the things i got a little upgrade for the wireless go 2s was i bought a third party dock that had a battery in it so i had a, a hard case where i could put them in there and you know it, it would basically charge them Right. And that, you know, it's kind of clunky, but it worked. Um, and then this year, getting to my point, was I got the wireless um, pros, the road wireless pros. And that comes with a case, comes with two little cases, one for all the accessories, one for charging. It's also a dock. So you put stuff back in the case and then you plug that into your desktop or your phone and you can then... One, not only configure the devices, but you can pull the files off 
directly. You could also just um, plug this in and it shows up as like USB drives. So you could just copy the files off right but there. But the storage is integrated into the device. Um, the storage is in the physical device, yeah. Yeah, not so there's, in, no, there's no SD card or something. No, 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 not at all. Um, but it has um, plenty of room on there. Um, I, something like 40 hours in broadcast quality. Yeah, but that's still like it would be easier if you can just swap the SD card. <laughs> sure, um, but given the size, it's pretty small. And um, this is my point was in all over the years of the reliability that I needed and everything. This is exactly what I needed years ago, and now I finally have it. Um, so it's something that I spent some money on, and um, I'm glad that I did that. And they were incredibly reliable. And all the little things that they fixed, they fixed here. The only kind of thing that's kind of annoying about it is when I want to remotely record, set the recording on the labs. It's like the button combination is kind of annoying on the um, on the receiver device. So, um, but once you get it rolling, then they're recording locally, and I can do that remotely, right? And that's a neat thing. And it all has other little things like it has TBC, so it has time code and stuff built in if you turn that on. Um, but regardless, the point is that, um, it's, it's been a great benefit to me. Um, and I'm glad that I, I did that as a technology upgrade. So that was something I did this year that was finally made the, um, that whole experience stable. Um, my way around it the year prior was I took my H6 and I set it up a little messenger bag where I set it up so I could put all my tech in there. And I could record the wireless signal out of the receiver into the H6 in the bag while I was roaming around. So that's like how I would catch audio that way. Um, but now I can do both, right? So I can do that plus also record, you know, in the, the labs much more reliably. So um, that was it. That was a technology upgrade I made this year. And I'm glad I did it. Um, and uh, I have a small short list of things I need to do every year. Um, aside from probably another three access gimbal and probably a, a new new camera, you know. So, oh, I did I did get some new cameras, but they're like Raspberry Pi Zeros with the uh, camera modules. Right. Yeah. Your yeah. Pi cams. Yeah, it's nice. I hooked them up to my uh, my home assistant. That's been mm -hmm. pretty nice so far. Yep. I've been updating it. The only thing that I do notice that it does whenever you uh, update one of the home assistant parts mm -hmm. it uh, you need to restart it at some point because it will just the the, the all the uh, zigbee stuff will stop working oh the camera or the home assistant the home assistant oh, when you okay. update the home assistant sometimes the the internal networking stops working oh interesting i don't really yeah. rely on the zigbee part of it um i'm mostly doing over the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, um, that has been what's working for me. And yeah. I, but I have really... like a lot of those Zigbee lights and Zigbee switches and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so I was using it, and then suddenly it stops working. And then I'm like, oh wait, did I turn off a light somewhere and it stopped working in the network? Because the 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 Hue for some reason the Hue bridge was like always able to do the the whole networking stuff pretty yeah. pretty seamlessly. Yeah. And then this one is like. There's something about this, man. So I, I notice with the um, the other home assistants, we'll do it that way, um, not so incredibly reliable, um, but home assistants has been pretty consistent. Um, the only kind of thing that goes offline is I have a rope light. Um, oh, it's like an LED, you know, strip light that I just should have put on the top of my um, cabinets in my kitchen. And that GoV device um, doesn't doesn't uh, function. You have to literally have to pull the power on it, put the power back on it, and wake it back up. Um, and so it, it doesn't it just doesn't operate in general, even with like the GoV software. It goes offline. And that's more about a physical piece of hardware problem than it is about, you know, it being available on the network to be uh, commanded. 
So, mm. but again, it cost me like less than twenty bucks, and I got uh, I got you know sixteen feet of of LED light. That's the smallest size that they have. So I just sort of one day I got up on my counter and I just sort of oh actually no on my ladder I got up on my ladder and I spread uh, the rope just randomly you know at the top so that I'd have some extra lighting at the top of uh, you know the kitchen. So. Yep. Okay. Do you want to go through the fun stuff or the links? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, so, kind of funny. Last since the last time uh, I uh, put these links in here in July, uh, yeah. Coffeezilla got sued by um, Logan Paul, one of the Paul brothers. Anyway. Yeah. So that kind of sucks. But anyway, uh, inside po- Coffeezilla's air quotes, ten million dollar virtual production studio. Palmatic link slash 1F4 for that one. Um, then you've probably all seen this guy. Um, Philip Ziba uh, debunked uh, TikTok's worst conspiracy theorists. Palmatic link slash 1F5. He goes really deep on the uh, on the on that guy. It's an interesting video. It's like t- TikTok is such a weird place. Uh, TikTok's just another venue that has a different format for discovery and, and, you know, we all doom scroll no matter what the, whether it's Instagram or YouTube shorts or TikTok, um, they all offer a different kind of feed of data. So it's all a mess no matter where you go. Uh, the, the, the big thing is just, you know, be con- cautious, cautious, I can't. Just be aware that you shouldn't doom scroll. That's all. And if you're doing it, um, you're seeking uh, you're seeking something, and uh, you're not going to get it. So you should just stop, go to sleep. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyhow, okay. So a couple of links from me. Uh, uh, Malp. So this was, uh, I think, props to history. Um, again, we you know it was like two months ago we put these links in. Um, he's talking about the original Malp and. Um, and so it was going through that. That this is for from people Stargate. who do not know what that is. That is a Stargate reference. Yeah, I was going to say SG One. Um, that's the basically the little uh, robot on uh, wheels that they send uh, basically across to see what's on the other side of the wormhole. Um, and then music assistant. So this is a. Uh, extra... Did you like give the link? Oh, sorry. Polymatic dot link slash one f six. And then this is something um, the creator of Home Assistant um, went off and created something called Music Assistant. It's basically um, it's basically a music server. You can run independently from a Home Assistant, but if you have a Home Assistant set up, you can um, add this into Home Assistant. Um, and what it does is a couple things, which is interesting that none of like including Plex and Jellyfin don't do today. Um, it can do the standard thing where if you point it to network storage or local storage on your home assistant or wherever you're running the server, um, it will go ahead and it will index everything and it will make you know your music streamable um, to your Air AirPlay devices uh, or even your Google Chromecast or over Bluetooth, whatever, whatever that piece of hardware has access to. Definitely, it's extended when it's connected to home assistant because. Um, whatever devices you have connected to Home Assistant, it, it can even basically um, stream to your Sonos devices, right? Your Sonos and your Chromecast devices and your AirPlay devices all at the same time. So that's something that, you know, these other um, streaming servers don't do. Um, so this is focused on music, but one of the things that's interesting about it is you can also connect up with all the the music streaming services, so like Tidal, Apple Music, um, you know, Spotify. Um, I think I think Amazon Music is coming. Um, so I would think that if you have Spotify, basically you have all the releases, right? But if you go over to Tidal, I think, what, Beyonce, maybe a few artists have their exclusives over there. So these streaming services really don't. They're all the same. They don't really have any... Um, Anything that's like unique on one network versus the other. But one of the things you can do with Music Assistant is you can go over to your Spotify list 
And you can go ahead and put stuff into a, a music assistant playlist and you go over to Tidal and do the same thing and then over to Amazon Music and then Apple Music and you can go ahead and basically build your playlist from the different services and intermixed with your local files if you want and then you can stream them to any device. Um, and more importantly, you can it's not one playlist to all devices. It's You can have different playlists for different devices and that's it music server uh, music assistant and so I wanted to I thought this was great and then it, it enabled me to be be basically um, make some local stuff plus um, you know Spotify stuff and put a playlist together I found it pretty interesting um, only works in inside you can't you know remotely listen to your music um, you know to your devices that way um, and you can also listen to that on your phone. It does consider that device as a, um, as a, as a player. Um, polymatic.link slash one F seven. Okay. I got another one. Um, more of like a longer video, um, go, uh, getting caught undercover at Amazon. This guy went into the Amazon, uh, um, fulfillment service, uh, uh, facility and he, um, he tried to get uh, some people's uh, uh, input on uh, unions and stuff like that, and then, mm -hmm. uh, then they uh, basically decided threw him out. And he had some fun plans to get uh, what did he do with the um, Amazon delivery driver urine as a sports drink? Yeah, um, uh, and, and th he this was... video is region locked. I cannot watch this video. I had to oh. watch it through a, th a third party channel. Oh, really? Yeah, um, it was interesting. I will say, look, most of the time, these people who are doing this stuff. It's kind of junk, right? It's just junk. But this guy was pretty smart about it. Um, he leads you down a path, or like, oh, that's not going to go well. And he's consulting a lawyer um, in his video this whole time. Um, yeah, so don't, and, don't don't spoil it. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of twists to it. Is my point. Yeah, um, so, twists on twists. Yeah, this guy isn't just doing a shitty thing. He's doing a shitty thing correctly uh, within the rules of, you know, while the situation is pretty crappy to begin with. So The, the, the way he's using his nieces is pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> having a, like, a, having them order, <laughs> order things. <laughs> that was so good. That was the best part, actually. <laughs> Okay, uh, so another longer video. Um, oh, that was Paul Mangling slash 1F8 for the Amazon undercover stuff. And then there is the true story of Athletic Greens or AG1. Uh, Paul Mangling slash 1F9. That's more about, you know, one of those sponsors that you see in a lot of like YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, it's, if it's, it's not surprising that there's bad people all over the place but it seems to be some of these sponsors like uh was it the one with the knives the one with the it's it's all the same stuff it's all the same people look um if you you follow a bunch of youtubers and they're all pushing the same junk um that should be a red flag um you know not every youtuber influencer um thinks about these things sometimes they just they have a bottom line they they need to be able to survive in the world so they accept money wherever it comes um and uh, even the more selective i mean look they talk about tim ferris in here too so i have no idea who that is um the four hour work week guy it's a pretty smart dude very successful on his own um and there are people like, you know, people like follow Joe Rogan or Logan Paul. There is Tim Ferriss people. Um, he's, though, a, a pretty smart guy, Tim Ferriss. But I, I don't follow him. I don't listen to any of his stuff. Uh, okay. Well, I don't, was, I don't know anything about this guy. So I have no way to. Uh... Uh, that was polymatic.link slash 1F9. And then I have Snazzy Labs. I got the I got Google's first uh, Google secret Android prototype. It's kind of funny because I had the Google uh, the um, dream the, the no I had the um, the G one yeah G one and the one the that was 
Uh, you had the dream before too, right? No, you... I got it at uh, uh, at uh, Google I/O. Right. So that's what I, I, I took saying. I took the G1. I bought the G1 from T-Mobile in the oh. Netherlands, and then I got it, uh, brought it to the U.S., and then we got the dream there, <laughs> or the Google Ion, as they called it. Right. Yeah. That first year, or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, Pretty interesting a... set of history. Um, I mean, I was aware a lot of this stuff was going on. And so, you know, every Apple fanboy is like, oh, Apple created, no, Apple created something. But they certainly weren't the inventor of a lot of things. In fact, they're often not the inventor of a lot of things. Um, their partners are the inventor of a lot of things. So you get all these new fancy technologies in their iPhones and this. It, Apple had very little to do with it other than they're saying, yes, we want this in our thing and we want it exclusive for the first two years. So, If you, if you look at some of the photos of the uh, uh, the uh, Google Ion, uh, some of the photos are of my hands because <laughs> I sent some photos to some people that were doing the, the, the articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Yeah. That was, was polymedic.link slash one FA. That's this when they when Twitter was still uh, you know young. Yep, uh, th those were those were the days th yep. where there was a lot more. Well, I don't think Twitter was ever innocent, uh, inside or outside, or the people that are on Twitter. So everyone was uh, always looking for something. Um, Speaking okay. of, uh, of bad people. Yeah, um, so I had two videos, right? These are interesting if you're really interested in, in SpaceX and this whole thing. Um, uh, what is his name? Tim Dodd? Is that what it is? Um, the guy who runs uh, Everyday Astronaut. He also did one with um, uh, Blue Origin recently. That's the latest mm. video. But anyway, these are two videos. It's all part one, part two. Part one's more interesting. Part two's a little less interesting. Um, this is where he is going and walking through with um you know uh mr mr x um and and talking about you know building these massive uh rockets um and they are indeed massive uh even I wish as just go back into doing space stuff that would be so much better yeah um but there's a lot that goes into it and the scale of these things is incredible um polymatic that link slash one fc one fd um, I worked for a company a number of years ago. I was in one of their um, Texas facilities. It was one of the newer newer warehouses that they built. Um, and it was only like, I don't know, something like 4.3 million square feet or something. Um, and, um, and it was massive. And there was a 50-gallon trash can that on most people is like four feet um, maybe, uh, yeah, four, four and a half feet high. And, um, and this thing was a big trash can. It was at the corner and it looked like a little, and I, I, I took a fairly wide shot, but it looked like a tiny little dot. And then there was a human that was a little bit of bigger than this trash can and it's a tiny little dot. And in this picture, you can see it's like, it's like that scene from, uh, Raiders of Lost Ark where they, you know, they're putting the ark away in the big old mass of where it, it looked exactly like that. Um, so those that place is tiny compared to the stuff they're doing at SpaceX and mm -hmm. in all of these massive warehouses. And um, that rocket is it's it's humongous. So, um, but anyhow, it was an inside look. Also, as someone who's doing documentary stuff, it shows you where you just don't need a lot of hardware and a lot of people. To make this stuff work <coughs> so it was interesting from that perspective as well for me um and then last uh orla came out with um another song that's uh on her latest album that she's basically going to be touring in the u.s uh so polymatic.link slash one fe before i went to otakon this was on my brain this song just kept looping in my head so there you go okay okay uh i think that's it we went through all the links. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. Uh, I will be happy not to talk for a while. 
Yeah, yeah. Be very happy you don't have to deal with all the coughing uh, on the on the audio stream here. <laughs> <coughs> just needed some more for you. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, well, that's I'll, that's what's at the end. That's where you <laughs> use the silence feature. You you select an area and you silence it out. Nope. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you can find Alan at Polymax link slash Alan. You can find me at Polymax link slash John. Or for feedback, you can reach us at podcast at polymatic.media our website is polymatic.media and uh, you can find all our links and I hope you tune in next time <laughs> there you go for your end or my end either or I mean, or. basically your end <laughs> <laughs>